that they're here. It's just to try to help them be in a position where they can meet with God. So what I want to do first is I'm going to have a seat, and you're going to not hear from me much anymore. You're going to hear from them. The first thing I want to do is we're going to do some introductions. So I'm going to let them go around, introduce yourself, where you're from. You're going to hear some different languages too, so um, you have no interpretation will be needed. I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> Guten Morgen zusammen, I'm Tabea from Switzerland. Mm. Guten Morgen, I'm Jonas from Germany. Guten Morgen allemaal, I'm Aaron from the Netherlands. Yeah, so Aaron, while you still have that microphone, how about we do this, is I want to let the team tell you, like, why, why off the grid, why New Zealand, why here? Like, why are you here? So just give us a little bit of an understanding of why you decided to come to off the grid. So I'm here because I, um, I went to the church in the Netherlands every week, but I didn't really understand how I could apply the, um, the services, the things that I learned to my life. So I just sat there in the church and just listened and hoped um, until, the church, um, until the services were over. And so I wanted to learn more about God and actually about learning how to get a relationship with God or how to get a close relationship with God. And so um, that's how I um, looked on the internet for a trip to outside of the Netherlands to, um, to learn more about different cultures and maybe the churches and the services in the church are there are also different. So that's why I came on Off The Grid. Mm, thank you for that, Aaron. How about you, Jonas? So my um, job situation allowed me to have a few uh, months um, or two, three. And yes, I um, decided to spend this month uh, for God and I wanted to uh, grow with Jesus. And yes, that's why I'm here. Do an uh, internship uh, at Teapot Valley Camp for five weeks after off the grid. Yes, that's why I'm here. Going to provide a little bit of manpower for them during their winter months when they're working hard. I hope so. Did some, <laughs> some kids' camps too, so Jonas is going to be chasing kids and yeah, hammering nails or whatever else that needs to be done. So, yeah. How about you, Tobia? <clears throat> so, I just finished my studies in psychology and um, I will start working in July, but before I want to so before starting to work, I really wanted to have some time off where I could calm down and also just do something completely different, being outdoor and in nature. And I also wanted to refocus my life on God and find new perspectives on life. So that's why I'm here. Six years worth of studying is a long time. Yep. Yes. Yep. So I was uh, home working and I just felt a little bit burnt out and I felt like my cup was kind of running empty and I needed something to fill my cup but not just experiences and things like that. I just really wanted a God-centered thing that will fill my cup up with just the Holy Spirit. So. Uh, I want to be on off the grid because like, I want to spend some intentional, undistracted time fixing my eyes on Jesus, um, and seeking his will and plan for my life um, in the future, just being like the transitional stage, being like, oh, Lord, what should I do? And just wanting that, um, yeah, just laying my plan A big component of this, um, this time together is you probably recall when you were a young adult, it's kind of like the I'm moving away from my parents and I'm kind of uh, owning my faith and establishing myself. And that's really what we're doing here too is this 40 days is a lot about that, just seeking God and helping, um, helping ourselves even understand like what do I believe? There's a lot of really good questions around the the table after dinner and there's a lot of good questions on walks and the reason we use the outdoors as our classroom is just to give us a way to kind of make thinking about the Lord 
just a normal part of life. We're not just going to, you know, sitting in a classroom and studying theology is important. I'm not undermining that. But what I'm saying is that there's, we need to make this like a normal part of routine in our life of just evaluating with friends. What do you believe? How do you think about this? When we open up God's word, what do we see? We study God's word on off the grid from Genesis all the way through Revelation in 40 days. We hit a lot of the, we hit the big points that all point back to Christ. And so what we want to do this morning is I want to give the off the grid team a few moments to kind of explain to you what's, what's been maybe a highlight in our study, what's been something that God has said to them, um, what's been something they've been praying about. Um, we won't go through all the details. They all have goals. They all have a one word theme about why they're here. Um, there's a lot of intentionality. It's not like we just pack a backpack and we walk through the forest and we kind of like waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell us something. I mean, we do that, but there's a lot of intentionality about what's going on here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Becky first about the idea of what's, what's, what has stood out for you in the study? What's something that's maybe jumped off the page that you go, oh, you know, I've got to think about that beyond my time in New Zealand? Okay. I really enjoyed reading through Exodus and hearing about Moses. Um, I've heard it all my life through Sunday school and I, you know, Moses and the Israelites. As we were reading it, we were able to dig into some of the details and that really just illuminated the story for me. Um, so God is in the form of a burning bush and Moses is there. And God is about to tell him some really incredible things. Um, and he's about to tell him his plan for saving his people, the Israelites, from slavery. Um, but before he goes into that, uh, God asked Moses to do something that seems so small to me and that's easy to miss. Um, he says, Moses, take off your sandals. The ground you are standing on is holy. Um, and that, I just always miss that. Um, but it is a really big action that Moses took and we asked ourselves, why? Why did God ask uh, Moses to take off his sandals and why did that mean so much to God? Um, and in other words, um, like one of the things that stood out to me is um, the only thing in between God and his holy ground and Moses was his sandals. So as we come to God, what do we have to take off? Um, we have to take off our sandals as we come to God. Um, yeah, it was such an eye-opener for me that God is great, God is good, he is powerful, um, and he is holy. And I want to honor that as I come to him and take off my sandals. Yeah, not be so, I think the word you've used before is be casual, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so how would we be less casual than when we approach God? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we understand that he is big and um, we read about all these miracles he's done in the Bible and mm -hmm. he's the same God today. And yeah. He is big and he's powerful and just honoring those things as you come to him and understanding how big and great he is. Yeah, in a way like a posture. We have to make sure that we're posturing well before him in a way that's honoring to him. Yeah. God's our friend, but he's also, <laughs> he created everything. We talk about that in week one of Off the Grid about being an image wearer and the fact that, I mean, everything we look at. We look at the mountains around us. We were in the Richmond Hills on our first walk, and then we were in Nelson Lakes last week, as Paul mentioned, and we're around all this big stuff. But we have to look down at the little things, too, and see the little things. And then we look at ourselves and we say God created us too so we have to make sure that we're focusing on both the big stuff and the small stuff so t to be a um that same story I think you you uh, said something about this something that stood out for you in that same encounter that God had uh, that Moses had with God on the mountain eh? yeah so <clears throat> for me what stood really out is something that happens a bit later in this conversation that God has with Moses so after Moses has taken off his sandals God tells him that he should go to the Pharaoh and ask him to let um, the people of God go. And we can see in scripture that Moses is not exactly like excited about it uh, at first. He's not kind of on fire at that point. So, um, um, but what God says then to him, he asks him, what is in your hands? And in Moses' hands at that point is his walking stick. And we can really imagine that this stick, it has been with Moses like for 40 years. He has been a shepherd. Um, for 40 years, um, he has gained a lot of experience with that stick, and it's also kind of his identity at that point. We can also imagine maybe it's kind of part of his body almost, because it, because it has been at his side like for 40 years. And um, so God tells him to throw down the stick on the ground before God, and 
then it turns into a snake and God asks Moses to pick it up again by the tail. And so Moses does all of these things and we can also see further down in scripture that uh, Moses will perform really great miracles with this walking stick. So for example, he will part the Red Sea with it and he will also win a war with that stick in his hands. And so what really stuck out for me, stood out for me there is um, Moses was really worried about if he could complete this task, if he could manage um, to do what God asks him to, to do. And basically God tells him um, um, with this con in this conversation that um, you don't have to do it on your own. Um, yeah, just throw down what you have before me, throw down what you can do and what you maybe cannot do at this point and throw it, uh, pick it up again in my presence. And um, yeah, then you will be able to do things that are greater than things that you could do on your own. So this was really, stood really out to me. And to be it for you, I mean, here it is, you've, you've gone to university, you have an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, um, you're a skilled, talented person, but how is it like, like for you throwing down everything that you know and everything you are how is that going to make a difference for you moving forward in your career as a psychologist, counselor, serving people? Yes, yeah, so I'm kind of excited to start in my new job, my first job after studying for so long. But I'm also kind of um, a bit anxious. And just reading that part of scripture, I think it showed me that um, I can bring before God what I think I already can do, but also what I can't do at that point. And yeah, when I really choose to work, uh, that work, God work through me, that I can really achieve greater things and that I can also work, uh, walk with God in that. So this really gave me a new perspective. Yeah, God's going to provide wisdom and he's going to provide a, a caring hand that you can on your own, but he's going to be able to do it through you. So the Holy Spirit does, does things through us that we cannot do on our own. Yeah. Jonas. Yeah, so we're... Um, what stood out for you? Because we've had, Jonas and I and Aaron have had some long talks. The boys have been helping me around our place in Natamoti because we have some critters that we've had to take care of. So uh, possums and some pigs and a couple other things. And we were sitting on the hill the other night in the dark awaiting the arrival of something at our bait pile. And we just had some good chats. So we've been talking about a lot of stuff. So I'm curious to see, what, you know, Jonas, what's, been, what's stood out for you besides... Possum hunting or pig hunting or... <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, then I would say um, we talked about uh, the Israelites uh, standing in front of the Red Sea. Um, they were chased by the Egypt and um, God told them to move. So, um, yes, and they had really to trust uh, God and um, they saw they don't have a chance, uh, but they had to trust in God. And um, yes, I had one of these moments where uh, God uh, said, move to me. It was before I applied for this uh, program and uh, for this journey. And I had a job where I was really comfortable with. And uh, he told me just uh, to step out of, out of my uh, comfort zone and do something new and do something for him. So. Um, at this point, I decided to quit my job um, earlier and uh, to come here to uh, do something, something for God and do an uh, internship. Yes, um, for now, I would say um, I want to look uh, for more of these moments where God uh, tells me just move. You, you're going to have a couple busy months of going, though, because you've off the grid is one go. And then Teapot Valley Christian Camp is going to be another go. And then you're going to get back to Germany. And what's after that? You're going to go where? To um, a mission, mission trip with our youth group to Croatia to reach some uh, islands uh, in the ocean before Croatia. Yep. So it's a lot of going in the next. So there's, there's going to be parts where you can't hesitate. And when God says go, what we're learning is sometimes God's ready to move. But he wants to see us like all in. He wants to see us move. So God's going to say, move, and then I'll move. And he's got the power. He's got the authority. And, and he has the way for us. But he just wants to make sure that we are all in. And being all in sometimes means taking the first step, making that step, making the move. Right? There we go. All right. 
Aaron, so what stood out for you, brother? We've been talking about a lot of things and coming around Nelson Lakes the other day, you kind of had a moment, you're like, ooh, you, t you were telling me some things. And so why don't you share what's on your heart? Yeah, so as Norm already says, we went to the Nelson Lakes um, last week. And when we, when we were on our way back, we took a break and we talked about uh, Deuteronomy 28. And I will read the first two verses for you. Um, Today I'm giving you the laws and the teachings of the Lord your God. Always obey them and the Lord will make Israel the most famous and important nation on the earth. And he will bless you in many ways. The Lord will make your businesses and your farms successful. So what really stood out for me was that if you um, obey God's teachings and laws, you will, I said, you will basically have a perfect life, but I think that's not really perfect, but you, have to, you still have to do your, uh, your best, of course. And in verse 14, he says, but you must not react any of his laws and teachings or worship other gods. And there, he, there God um, warns us for um, the next verse, because that's about the um, that's about the curses he 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 will put on you if you disobey him. So, in verse 15 and 16, he says, "Israel, today I'm giving you the the law, the laws, and the teachings of the Lord your God. And if you don't obey them, if you don't obey them all, he will put you." who put many curses on you, your businesses and farms will fail. So I, I, um, I recognized that it's basically the, it's exactly the opposite of, of each other. And I, I also never heard of um, Deuteronomy 28. I've never uh, read it, so it was interesting for me. I learned something new. Yeah, as we work our way through the Old Testament, what we're doing is we're, un we're uncovering in a way um, what Jesus has really done, fully done. You know, we, um, we oftentimes look at the fact that Christ has come and he died for me and he saved me and we're comfortable in that. But he's done so much more. His death, resurrection has done so much more. And when we were looking at Deuteronomy 28, we talked about the idea that while Jesus is our covering, he has taken on that curse that the law brings, we still have consequences when we sin. And we talked about this sitting on the side of Lake Rotaiti in the sun the other day. I was kind of pinching myself wondering what the season was because we went from snow on Tuesday, I mean Tuesday night it snowed up on top of the ridge where we were. Um, not complaining, we all had a beautiful night, right? It, ready for this? It, it was Becky's first tramp in her life first hut she's ever been in. She had the new mattresses at Bushline Hut, cozy, warm, candlelight, and woke up to snow in the morning. And then by the time we're walking out of there, we're in like shorts and a t-shirt sitting on the beach. And I'm wondering like, you know, is this summer or not? But as we were sitting in the sunlight and sitting there in the warmth on the stones, I'm th and we were talking about Deuteronomy 28, um, Aaron and I had just that talk about what, what does the curse mean, you know? And it's the idea that Jesus took that on for us, right? But we still have consequences. So Aaron, like when we think about consequences for sin, um, what's something you think about? What's, we, we've talked about this. What's something that happens when we think about we're gonna be disobedient? What happens to us? I think when you disobey God, um, when the Israelites um, left, I think then God maybe did put a curse on him, on them. But now I think we just, if we, um, I think that's not um, now anymore. I think when we, um, I think if we disobey God on purpose now, and or we just don't care about God and his book, I think we do have consequences, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's lots of things we, we shared as a group, just the things that we feel like, what are our consequences for being disobedient? 
and so we want to talk more about the idea of in our next couple of weeks together is um, how do we stay in fellowship and in, in right relationship because we are positionally we are right with God now and how do we remain in that right space with him and in close fellowship understanding the fact that we are blessed people and the fact is that we have a, as, as it was so nicely said, I love that what you said, brother, during he, in Hebrews, that Jesus is the veil, and he's between us and, and, and God now. So, um, Jemima. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah, what's, what's stood out for you? What's the Holy Spirit been putting on your heart? Sorry, at Lake um, Rotoiti. Rot we say it differently, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> um, the verse um, Luke 9, verse 62, really just kept on going round and round in my head, um, which is, it says, like, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Um, and it's like the Lord like, unpacked that for me, being like, I'm asking you to put both hands on the plow and like right where you are and give me 100% focus, mind capacity and dedication and not look back. Like not look back whether it's like comfortable or familiar or like letting anything distract you, just like full, like, full focus. Um, and then he also brought to mind like how um, the, the Israelites and he was leading them out of Egypt. Um, but they, they looked back because things were getting hard and things were tough um, and they wanted what they had left behind, even though that meant like going back to slavery and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, just like wanted to encourage you and remind you, like God has, how He has reminded me. I want to remind you that when you put your hand to the plow into what God has called you to do, don't look back. Don't let um, wanting to stay in what is familiar or comfortable or safe keep you from stepping into what He has called you to do. Thanks for that. Yeah, this. It's probably, um, we could probably sit up here for another hour and tell you the, the things that we've been going through in God's Word. And we've got, we've got four weeks left, so we've got a lot of time to spend in God's Word. So if, if you would, I would, I would certainly appreciate, and I know the team would appreciate, you would continue thinking about us, praying for us. Um, tomorrow we leave, uh, we're going kayaking in the Abel Tasman National Park for a couple of days. And um, go to go for a swim, so we'll be swimming. And uh, what's, what's going to be good, though, is that each week we build on the weeks before. And um, the weeks begin to get more and more intense as we, we kind of have an aim for the end of June when these, when these five young adults are going to be sent out and launched into the world is the idea that they're ready for the next season. It's not like we have like a, a finish line they're trying to cross. That's not, the, that's not the case. That's not the point of our 40 days together. They're each, in a way, on their own journey. And what we want to do is pray, Holy Spirit, that you enable them to be in the space they need to be in so that when they step out of our world and into their world, they're ready for the next season of life. So that's if you want to pray something, that would be the prayer to pray. So um, we want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to share a bit. Paul, we want to say, as a team, just sorry and Linda for your loss. and. We, um, we want to thank you, Paul, too, for your service with OM and for serving our board with your wisdom and the grace you bring to, the, to that team. I want to say personally just thank you so much for all the service and for giving us a chance to just share a little bit about what the Holy Spirit and what God's doing in our, in our little world. So thank you, guys. Wow, well, what a great team, eh? We're just going to continue in worship this morning, but um, just as they are there, over there, I, I really want to um, yeah, encourage uh, folk this morning, maybe one of those young people, or Norman Christie, you kind of think, oh man, I'd just like to, to uphold them over these coming weeks. Uh, would, you, would you just go and say to them, look, I'd love to be praying with you. Make sure you get their name written down so you can pray for them by name. And, uh, and uphold them over these, uh, these next four weeks. And, and Norman Christie are here forever, we hope. <laughs> God, God willing. God willing, yeah. We, we just love uh, Norman Christie. They're just awesome people. If you'd like to, to know more and pray more and to, off the grid, then talk to them as well after the service. Mm.
we're going to continue to worship, and as we do, let's just, um, let's just uh, I guess, uh, respond in a way to, to maybe something that's been shared already, maybe through what Joel shared earlier, maybe just in the way that um, the songs um, spoke to us at the beginning, maybe through one of these um, people, what, the things that they're experiencing and, and discovering of God maybe through the prayers and the testimonies that have been happened already. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that uh, you are so gracious in the way that you, you work in our lives. You, you draw us into your presence. You communicate with us just like you did with Moses. You help us to recognise where you're at work and how you want to to use every one of us in some way. Lord, would you uh, set us free afresh from those things that hold us back? Would you illumine, shine into our hearts so that we can more clearly see the things that inhibit your grace and your presence being worked out through us? Lord, we worship you. We desire to be in your presence. Thank you. You have made the way available to us. And we step through the veil into your presence now in Jesus' name. Amen.